last time we finished reading the first sutta of the section of the Arahant, removing the residual conceit, I am. Today, we are going to continue with the second sutta of the Arahant section. The trainee and the Arahant. At Kosambi in Gosita's Park, the Blessed One addressed the monk's task. There is a method, monks, by means of which a monk who is a trainee, standing on the plane of a trainee, might understand. I am a trainee. While a monk beyond training, standing on the plane of one beyond training, might understand. I am one beyond training. And what monks is the method by means of which a monk who is a trainee, standing on the plane of a trainee, understands I am a trainee? Here, monks, a monk who is a trainee understands as it really is. This is suffering. This is the origin of suffering. This is the cessation of suffering. This is the way leading to the cessation of suffering. This is a method by means of which a monk who is a trainee, standing on the plane of a trainee, understands. I am a trainee. So, this discourse starts with, the Buddha makes a statement, okay, the trainee is like this. And, Beyond training is like it's like that. Okay. So beyond training would mean the arahant. Here the Buddha starts with if you are a trainee, then you should understand this as re really is. the noble truth. This one. A common formula. Hey, sister, I can you like to continue. Again, monks, a monk who is a trainee considers thus. Is there outside here another ascetic or Brahmin who teaches a Dharma so true, real true, and actual as the Blessed Ones does? He understands thus. There is no other ascetic or Brahmin outside here who teaches a Dharma so real true, and actual as the Blessed One does. This too is a method by means of which a monk who is a trainee, standing on the plane of a trainee, understands, I am a trainee. Again, monk, a monk who is a trainee understands the five spiritual faculties, the faculties of faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. He does not dwell, yet dwell having contacted with the body, that which is their destination, their accumulation, their fruit, their final goal, but have having pierced it through with it through with wisdom, he sees this too is a method by means of which a monk who is a trainee, standing on the plane of a trainee, understands I am a trainee. Okay, thanks, Sister Akin. Okay. Good okay. news number thirty-seven. That is outside the Buddha's teaching. Uh, means by, is there outside here? Is there something outside the Buddha's teaching that's real, true, and actual? <laughs> yeah. So after considering, there's no other Satya of Brahmins outside the Buddha's teaching but teach the Dharma so real, true, and actual. That's what one does. So this is the second, the second factor of a trainee. And the third one, a trainee understands the five spiritual activities. Faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. Footnotes number 38. As I understand it, that which is the destination, the final goal is. Nibbana. We have here 
another essential difference between the trainee and the arahant. The trainee sees Nibbana, the destination of the five faculties that in which they culminate their fruit and final goal. However, he cannot contact it with the body, cannot enter upon the full experience of it. In contrast, the Arahant both sees the final goal and can fully experience it here and now. This is the same way which you like to continue. And what nouns is the method by means of which a noun beyond training, standing on the plane of one beyond training, understands. I am one beyond training. Here, monks, a monk beyond training understands the five spiritual faculties, the faculties of faith or the with wisdom. He dwells having contacted with the body that which is their destination, their culmination, their fruit, their final goal. And having pierced it through with wisdom, he sees. This is a method by which of this is a method by means of which a monk beyond training, standing on the plane of one beyond training, understands I am one beyond training. Again, monks, a monk beyond training understands the six faculties: the eye faculty, the ear faculty, the nose faculty, the tongue faculty, the body faculty the mind faculty. He understands these six faculties will cease completely and totally without remainder and no other six faculties will arise anywhere in any way. This tool is a method by means of which a monk beyond training, standing on the plane of one beyond training, understands I am one beyond training. Samta Nigaya for the 8.553. Sadu, Sadu, Sadu. As explained in the footnote, the, just now we have read the one factors of training. So if you notice this line, he does not yet dwell in Nibbana. So let me highlight this. But he sees. If you read further, the one beyond training, see, he already dwells, having contact with the body. So the Arahant, the one beyond training, he already dwells in Nibbana. So this is the one of the differentiators between the training and the Arahant. But both also sees the final destination. But one have has not dwelt, the Arahan has already dwelt in the in the, in the Nibbana. And then the last paragraph, the Buddha adds on a monk beyond training also understand the six faculties: eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. And he understands these six faculties will cease completely, totally without remainder, and it will not arise anywhere in any way so this sutta explains the difference between the training and the arahant i'll continue with the next sutta any questions or comments for this sutta okay okay i'll continue with the next one a monk whose crossbar has been lifted. Monks and Arahan is called one whose crossbar has been lifted, whose trance has been filled, whose pillar has been uprooted, one who has no bolt, a noble one whose banner is lowered, whose burden is lowered, who is unfettered. And how is the Arahant one 
whose crossbar has been lifted. Here, the Arahant has abandoned ignorance, has cut it off at the root, make it like a palm stump, done away with it, so that it is no longer subject to future arising. That is how he is one whose crossbar has been lifted. And how is the Arahant one whose trance has been filled in? Here, the Arahant has abandoned the round of rebirth, the process of renewed existence, has cut it off at the root so that it is no longer subject to future arising. That is how he is one whose trench has been filled in. So the first one, crossbar has been lifted. The Buddha here meant that the Arahan, the Arahan has abandoned ignorance. While trance has been filled in, here the Buddha means uh, the Arahan has abandoned the rounds of rebirth, process of renewed existence, cut it off at the root. Yes, sister, I can would you like to continue? And how is the Arahan? One whose pillar has been uprooted. Here the Arahan has abandoned craving, has cut it off at the root, and uh, so that it is no longer subject to future arising. That is how he is one whose pillar has been uprooted. And how is the Arahan one who has no bolt? Here the monk has abandoned the five low fetters, has cut off all at the cut off at the root, so that they are no longer subject to future arising. That is how he is one without no boat. And how is the Arahan a noble one whose banner is lowered, whose burden is lowered, who is unfettered? Here the Arahan has abandoned the conceit I am, has cut it off at the root so that it is no longer subject to future arising. That is how he's, he is a noble one whose banner is lowered, whose burden is lowered, who is unfettered. From Majuma Dekaya 22, Alaga Dut Pama Sutta. Thanks, Sister Akim. Next one, Arahan, whose pillar has been uprooted. So here the Arahan has abandoned craving. The one who has no will, which means the monk has abandoned five lower fetters. And the last one, whose banner is lowered, whose burden is lowered, and who is unfettered. So this means the Aran has abandoned the conceit I am, which is back again to the first sutta that we read. The first sutta of this section. So this is the the sutta about a monk whose crossbar has been lifted. Abandoned, firstly abandoned ignorance, second round of rebirth, and then craving, five lower fetters, and finally the conceit I am. Okay, let's continue one more sutta. Sister Singhvi, would you like to continue? My things an Arahan cannot do. In the past and also now, I declare that a monk who is an Arahan with things destroyed, one who has lived the spiritual life, done his task, laid down the burden, attain his own goal, utterly destroyed the fetters of existence and become liberated by final knowledge, is incapable of transgression in regard to nine things. He is incapable of destroying life, of taking what is not given, 
of engaging in the sexual act, of telling a liberated, uh, liberate lie, and of making use of stored up enjoyments as he did in the past when he was a householder. Further, he is incapable of taking a wrong course of action on account of desire, on account of hatred, on account of delusion, or on account of fear. In the past, and also now, I declare that a monk who is an arahan is incapable of transgression in regard to these nine things. From Aguta Nigara, Aguta, Aguttara Nigaya, uh, 907. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay. Thanks, Sister Singhui. <laughs> so let's highlight the nine things again. Nine things that Ara an Arahan cannot do. Firstly, and the Arahan is incapable of destroying life. Second, of taking what is not given. In other words, stealing. Third one, of engaging in this sexual act. Fourth, of telling a lie, a deliberate lie. And the fifth, making use of stored up enjoyments as he did in the past when he was a householder. So the wording here, I'm not too sure, but it probably refers to uh, not taking alcohol, stored up enjoyments. But we can double check this. And the sixth, the sixth thing, he's incapable of taking a wrong course of action on account of desire. On account of hatred. On account of delusion. And lastly, on account of fear. So there are nine in total. So these are the nine things that the Arahans are incapable to do. Okay, we will stop reading at this point and tomorrow we'll continue with a mind unshaken. Any questions or comments? Okay, okay let me check quickly, start up enjoyments. Okay, it does not mention specifically about alcohol or liquor, so it could refer to any kind of enjoyments, including alcohol and liquor. But it can also mean uh, any kind of pleasure in general that householders usually enjoy. Okay, if no questions or comments, Sister Singhui, would you like to do that? Dedication. Thanks, Sister Singhui. Till we meet again, may we be guided by the Buddha, Dhamma, and the Sangha. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Have an incapable Sunday ahead. <laughs> incapable of breaking the five precepts. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Peace Thank out. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.